Hi, everyone. Often we hear of saints that were the products of very pious and loving parents, sometimes wealthy, sometimes not. Well, we encounter something a little different with today's pair of saints, especially Theophanes. Theophanes uh, was someone who would, well, pursue a second marriage, if you will, from a woman named Pansemne. So it is on June 10th that the Holy Orthodox Church celebrates the memory of these two in a very interesting story. Theophanes had parents that were quite undevout, almost anti-religious. But nonetheless, he was someone that became interested in the faith of Christ from an early age. At his parents' beckoning, at the early age of 15, he took a bride. But only three years later, his bride reposed. And at this point, he decided that he was going to pursue the faith even more diligently. And so he set up a monastic cell for himself in the city of Antioch, where he there began to study the scriptures, to uh, fight the passions as best he could, those things that separate us from God, and to become as Christ-like as he possibly could. Well, about the same time, he heard a story of a woman named Pansemne, who was a rather notorious harlot that was living in the area. She had made a lot of money and lived pretty well uh, for herself, considering all of her clients. And Theophanes became very concerned for her. After hearing this story, he spent a lot of time in prayer about this and wondered if there was anything that he could do to help save Pansemne from her terrible life that she had embarked upon and also for the many clients that were visiting her to the destruction of their own souls. Well, eventually, after hours and hours in prayer, he had an idea. He discarded the hair shirt that he normally wore for his ascetical endeavors, and he put on something that was, well, very fancy and uh, very well-to-do. And he went out and he sought Pansemne and went to her house of ill repute and asked to see her. Well, he was admitted finally and then he sat down with her and began, uh, began conversing with her for quite a long time. Pansemne seemed fascinated by this man, but he was very direct. And he asked her, you know, how long have you been at this particular way of earning a living? And she said, well, around 12 years. It's been quite a long time. And she even made the suggestion to Theophanes that he was by far the most handsome of anyone that she had ever seen. Well, Theophanes just let this roll over him and then came to her with a startling suggestion. He said, I really desire to take you as my wife and to remove you from all of this. Well, Pansemne was flattered and quite stricken with Theophanes and wanted a little bit of time to think it over. So Theophanes left and returned to Antioch while she did mull it over until Theophanes appeared yet again a little while later and said, this time though I've got to place a condition on you or we will be unable to cohabit. And that is that you embrace the faith of the Christians, that you become a Christian. Well, this time, Pansemne was even more taken aback, and she didn't know how to answer. She was very concerned about this. She came from a long line of polytheists, those who believed in many gods. And although she was not particularly religious herself, she was still a little afraid of engaging in such an endeavor with this young man, no matter how attractive she might have felt him to be. Well, over the next weeks that ensued, as she was still trying to make up her mind, she encountered some other people and heard some other stories about the faith of Christ, about how that the righteous would be taken into everlasting life, and that those 
who decided to remain in their sins would inherit eternal punishment because they simply didn't want anything to do with the grace of God. This struck her to a heart to an extent that we could almost consider it something parallel to the great Saint Mary of Egypt in her conversion experience. Pansimni began to see the light. She began to understand that the way of life that she had been engaged was, was just not correct, that it was bringing destruction to her soul, and she sought more and more the things of God. She began learning about the things of God. She finally accepted holy baptism. And as a result of this, she became not interested in marrying Theophanes, who had never really intended that to begin with, but instead pursuing the life in Christ. And for the next 14 months, because that's the time that she would repose, as did Theophanes on the same day, for the next 14 months, she became an amazing saint. She was able to discern the wiles of the devil, to invoke healing from sicknesses for people, to understand the ways of God that few did because of the great grace that He had given her, but mostly because of her extraordinary turnaround, her metania, her dedication to the Lord and wanting to pursue the things of the life in Christ. It's a remarkable story. Theophanes being prompted by the power of the Holy Spirit to go to a place that certainly he never would have gone to otherwise but yet did so with boldness, with the sole goal of saving this woman from a life of degradation and of all the people that had been visiting her for those 12 years. We can learn a lot from this story, particularly of the idea of intercessory prayer and being bold in doing the things that the Lord requires no matter where it might take us, even if it's some place we cannot even consider entering otherwise. And we can also see with the great Pansemni that dedication to the Lord really requires just a simple act of will to turn to Him and to try and follow Him as best we can. By the prayers of these wonderful two saints, Theophanes and Pansimni, may we all follow the Lord with such dedication and with such love.